Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Why, hello there. As always, guys, want to thank everyone for their support over on Patreon as well as our newest Patreon. We want to say a huge thank you to Damien. Damien, we appreciate your support and everyone around you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Couldn't do it without you guys over there. Exclusive deep dives that we could speak very clearly on. So here we go. Netanyahu says Israel does not wait for a threat, but preempts it after strikes on Lebanon. This is called an act of aggression. It is illegal, but it doesn't seem like laws apply to certain nation states or certain entities. Absolutely. You know, there is this thought of being above the law. This is the... Also, sometimes this is rationalized through uh, div divine prerogatives, yes. which are really not divine, but completely satanic. But it sounds nice. Yes, absolutely. Everything that you have with Israel is based on really uh, them saying this was given to them by their God. That's the foundation. That's the rationalization for everything you see. And when you realize again, well, their God was one of a classification of beings that was called Elohim, which literally translates as judges, uh, powerful ones, mighty ones. Uh, you could even take it as, as the beings uh, from the heavenly realms, which again simply means not here, not originally here. When you look to what's going on, this is from RT. At, at this point in time, when this article was written, uh, 500 people they know of in Lebanon now uh, have lost their lives, uh, thousands injured. That number is probably much, much higher because they've been under constant bombardment by Israel again. You know, everything you see uh, going on in this world it, it is so orchestrated. It's, it's almost beyond belief that the masses, uh, how do we not have, you know, better than half the people awake to the fact that this is completely scripted and or even understand that the root of scripture is script but then again when you have kamala harris whose iq has been given as 78 by multiple sources being put up there as literally the leader of the u.s or i mean she's vp at the current time and people actually believe that somebody with a 78 iq would literally be able to handle no, I mean, they're all puppets. They're all actors. We know Zelensky was a bad actor. You, Ronald Reagan was an actor. He wasn't the greatest actor. He did a better job acting as president. There, it's always been actors. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, if anyone can remotely make a little bit of a squiggly X on a piece of paper, they can be up there and pretending to be some sort of a leader because we know there's... I don't know how many different entities behind them telling them what to do and they don't think for themselves in any way shape or form they only do what they are told and that's to a very high degree so you cannot get in a position of leadership like that unless you are almost a complete hollowed out human entity that only has the ability to follow instruction no one absolutely no one with any type of substance would be up there in that position because i mean they might think for themselves absolutely you know and and the second president bush he was he was a borderline dunce too i mean plain and simple this is something um that i heard from people that went to school with him and said he was just a a uh, party animal, uh, not in a clear state of mind, let's say. Well, you, know, you can imagine what that involves often. And really, not smart at all. Not intelligent at all. No way in the world that these people literally run things. No, they're just there to make you believe that you, know, you really are contributing to this world's governance. But that illusion is, is really uh, disappearing quickly. Syrian President Assad calls on Syrians in Europe to return to Syria. 
um, whether you've had uh, past run-ins or said something uh, that perhaps would have been taken in a uh, harsh manner by the current regime in Syria, all is willing to be forgiven. They want you home because they know they're next. After Lebanon, then it'll be Syria. So this is also um, obviously part of the bigger plan. And the bigger plan is, is really, really, um, it's so obvious. And so many people can see how obvious it is. Again, 99.6% of the people that are going to watch this, they get it. Um, it's just that half a percent maybe that uh, are watching this for the first time or watching our channel for the first time, uh, maybe through some some way somebody sharing somewhere because they limit the exposure and i'm seeing more more channels not just on uh, youtube but in other places every every place that you can stick a video pretty much uh, in is is going to be m at least monitored and interfered with by the system this is part of the reality and so you know i'm seeing like one channel uh, really crying the blues on Twitter because his views are dramatically down. This is because, again, it, it, what he is saying is not necessarily helping as much as hurting the system. And, you know, if you're on board with uh, at least one part of the plan, they will let it roll through. This is how you have people, um, you know, out there that could be homesteading and telling you 90%, 99%, great things that are very accurate but if they still are of a fundamentalist mindset they're going to be able to get millions of views because that fundamentalist mindset is the system and it serves the system so even if you have other people that are are saying you know our whole medical system is a is a travesty and pointing out all the things going along with that as long as they are patriotic you know, they're serving the system because that's going to lead to division. So, you know, this is again how the system uh, operates. This is somebody called Noctis Draven, who is a combat veteran, a writer, historical researcher. Um, he has like 73 and a half thousand followers over on Twitter. So he can reach people. And he has 20 hours of footage the world has never seen and he's not going to show because he was over in Iraq himself and he did sneak a camera in and he did share, um, you know, the type of thing that happened over there. What does he say? Because he was there. He says we were the oppressors. We, the U.S., you know, and still, I think, you know, again, it, the programming is so deep in so many people with, you know, hey, you're lucky to be born here. You live in the greatest country in the world. You know, w we can do no wrong. We're always the, the white hats. That's not the reality. And the greatest at what? I've brought this up many times, you know, because people will make these arbitrary statements and stop. And there's no thought behind them. It's all just ego and and fluffing up the ego and you know it's sad but it works really well on so much of the population so he says people call me un-american for being this way you know it's it's because we are being used we've been used as a tool to basically carry out the will of the control system and do horrible things we were the oppressors you wonder why they hate us? Be because, again, we, we've been all over these nations oppressing people. The U.S. has been used. Now, Bill Cooper talked all about this. And he also <laughs> called 9-11 a month before it happened. And then a month afterwards, he was no longer with us because the tax man came uh, knocking and the tax man was armed. And, you know, of course, they'll say Bill Cooper was too, which is probably the truth. But the reality is, again, you know, the system has a plan. It involves perhaps the seven Noahide laws uh, that would be required of non-Jewish people. And it involves certainly greater Israel, which you are now currently watch, watching in your time with your eyes. You're, you're watching this come about. I don't know how anybody cannot see um, 
you know, the fact that this is very much just simply steamrolling into another country and then there'll be another and then there'll be another and another and another and another and perhaps another. <laughs> Ultimately, what is this going to do? This is going to leave Israel in a position of, of central authority, especially after the BRICS nations and the NATO nations hit each other and weaken each other to a high degree. And how could Israel, this tiny little nation of what, like seven or eight million people? This is not a huge nation. No, but they have very, very huge connections. And, you know, you can say, well, their God is paving the way for them. And, um, yeah, you know, that that is pretty accurate, but it's not the creator of Homo sapiens. It's not the, uh, well, I should say it's not the creator of, of humans. Uh, it is the, perhaps one of the manipulators of Homo sapiens DNA. Certainly, it's not the source of all things. It's not the creator of this universe, not even close. You know, um, go back to that previous screen. I was just looking at that video that that guy, the, uh, scroll to the video he released. And look at that little girl's face. I mean, that is horrible. I, she's never going to forget that. She will never, ever, ever forget that, that one of our soldiers came in and made her family feel that way. She'll never forget. Look at that face. That is like frozen in time. There is so much trauma there. Why? Why? You know what? Why? I don't understand the purpose. And these people just blindly do it. You know, this this guy, good for him, showing what's going on. But still, in, in that moment in time, he still did it. He still did it. He still terrified this family. It's just a family. They are no different than you and I absolutely no different than you and I. They just want to live in peace. Don't we want to live in peace? You know, they're just getting by day to day. Aren't we just getting by day to day? I mean, could you imagine if a, sh a soldier came in with guns like that, you know, threatening your whole family? And uh, I mean, if she's alive today, she has had so much trauma. And don't think for a second that she's in a good place where she just wants peace for all. No, she witnessed something so horrific, not just with her family. I mean, I, I have a feeling this little girl has witnessed many deaths. She's witnessed uh, many, many, many lives lost. I mean, just, abs you know, through us. It, it's not like I did it or you did it. No, but those so many of our soldiers just did it. They just did it because they were told to. I, I, that's where I get frustrated. You know, people are just doing as they're told. And what you have to realize, too, is this is our taxpayers' dollars that right. go to this. And we pay the, for this. We pay for this, exactly. So in some ways, they're trying to impl you know, implement a karmic repercussion on us, which is what this is all about. This is the nonstop cycle um, of death and destruction and chaos. They, they use one country to create atrocities against another country, and then that country, you know, the people of that country will eventually you know seek justice in their own uh, minds and revenge and then this cycle never ends you know it's the Hatfields and the McCoys it's all these things throughout history uh, you know it, it just never ends and the trauma is real and the trauma can take lifetimes multiple lifetimes to to work out as well it's it's a mess you know i mean this is what we have on a very very large scale too and this is where i pour my heart out with compassion and hope and healing that these people who who this has happened to i don't care what side of anything that they're on i i don't care it this should not be happening this is not the normal uh cycle for us yes we go through ups and downs but this is something that is just completely barbaric. I mean, it's absolutely barbaric. And we look at some of the old videos and movies that we watch and we, we see uh, warriors with, with, with knives and swords and, and they're cutting people up that way. And we're watching these movies thinking, wow, that's barbaric. But this is no less barbaric. No, and, you know, again, the orchestrator of this with the U.S. in Iraq 
or the U.S. in Afghanistan or Russia in Afghanistan, too, for that matter. Um, uh, and now, you know, what's going on, uh, Hamas, Gaza, Lebanon at this moment, going all the way back to, again, uh, the giants of Bashan, the Native Americans. This is all one system. This is one system that does this. This is one system that creates literally hell on earth. This is the, the lower astral uh, type of uh, society that you see that, that just feeds off of the satanic fear and death and destruction. How anybody could in their right mind think there's anything good in this is, is beyond me. And it is really beyond um, any sort of uh, moral compass. There, there's no justification for this. There, there really is not. It's just pure greed, control, and power. And so what you have here is, again, a bigger plan. And it's, it's the plan for the power center on the planet after um, the current power structures have kind of obliterated each other to a, to a very high degree. Then really, you know, the center is going to be in the Middle East. You can see the Middle East is being raised up. Look to Dubai. Um, and look to uh, what we see happening over there. Those it's amazing cities popping up in the middle of nothing but sand. And yet, you know, this is going to be the focus. The focus of the world will be the Middle East as time keeps rolling on. I think, you know, they want to leave a lot of what is the current power structure, U.S. and NATO, and also uh, Moscow in rubble. This is part of their, their plans for the future and the center point is going to be uh, a greater Israel this is part of what's coming up and yeah you know I did see somebody that that got it a little bit that was put a thread over on Godlike saying you think they don't want 45 being 47 then you're not seeing the bigger picture no no it's all about again creating the dissension making the bad guys the left out to be so bad that it's going to be just like, well, you know, we have no choice. We have to choose the lesser of two evils here, obviously. But anytime you choose the system, you're choosing evil. It doesn't matter if it's the lesser of two evils. It's still the system. And there's talk about, oh, they're going to release med beds now. And med beds for everybody. And a lot of people are, are hanging on that and thinking, this is the only way I can, I can heal myself. I can have a good rest of my life as if they release the technology and give us the med beds they're they're letting everything come out all those little things that were whispers uh they're starting to shout but there's you know again uh, there's going to be offering uh the treats the sugar the sweets the temptations to you know lead you over here with all these promises of nice things after the world has gone through one of the darkest periods they're going to be, again, instead of giving you the whip at that point in time, they're going to be offering uh, the candy to try to entice you into uh, the oven, <laughs> so to speak. But they'll still have a whip. You know, don't, don't get me wrong there. If you go against the system, the system is going to be very severe. And, you know, you have all these people that are so brainwashed by the religion and they can't see it. That who who's this coming from? It's coming from the kings, the queens. It's coming from the aristocracy. You know, when you listen to the media, you're listening to the same entities that you're listening to when you pick up a Quran or pick up a Bible or pick up a Torah. This is all the same entities. So you know, this so echoes the um, General Wesley. Clark's statement of seven countries in five years. How are we going to get them to allow us to invade seven countries in five years? Well, you know, this is so much just like that again. And the question is, who's going to even stop Israel when Israel, it's not that they just have the U.S. behind them. They, they have the Anunnaki behind them, or at least the Gigi. Um, they, they have, again, a lot of technology that is going to be very, very mind-blowing. And this is talking about the restoration of the temple, the third temple, and starting the blood sacrifices again. 
any blood sacrifice uh, is is a is something in my mind I, I, that I could never justify, and yet here we are. War is a blood sacrifice. When they dress you up in your little soldiers' uh, <laughs> costumes, it's it's just the same thing as as the pagans used to do uh, in sacrificing perhaps one of the best warriors right before a military conflict in in hopes to gain uh, the favor of bloodthirsty gods. And really nothing really much changed because, again, a lot of these entities at the end of our pagan era that were being worshipped were also entities that we would call uh, fallen Anunnaki from the draconian system. They're intermingled in there with real beings of, of benevolence and light, and it's very hard for the masses to see the difference between, again, um, different entities like Inanna and Isis. And they'll even say Inanna is Isis. Well, it couldn't be anything farther apart. They're very different frequencies. They're very different beings. But again, it's so intertwined and so jumbled up. You'll get people again saying, well, you know, you're worshiping Baal. You know, you need to worship Yahweh. When again, it's one in the same en energy. Uh, you will know it by its fruits. How many people have died under, uh, you know, Yahweh's name? It's just amazing. So... That article by Henry Macca was was talking about, and, and you know, it's not just him. Again, th this goes all the way back a long time. Many people have talked about the Greater Israel Project or the Oded Yinin plan as well. Um, and I just want to clarify, too, that I do think that probably 99% of of the people that identify with this religion that we're talking about, the one that follows the Torah, don't have a clue. Uh, the vast majority don't have a clue because they hide in there. They hide in there. They hide everywhere in the secret societies. Again, if you were to really look at the hearts of, of all the Masons, you know, all the Freemasons, you'll find, and I have had very good friends uh, that were Freemasons, um, most of them don't have a clue, you know, where that leads to. They really, really don't. Most of them join and, and have good hearts and intend to do good, and, and they really don't even understand what's going on. But the seven laws of Noah, which include prohibitions against worshiping idols, cursing, you know, God. Well, again, when you, when you look to it, uh, it's Elohim in the plural. When you look to the oldest accounts of Genesis, you'll find a lot of Genesis in the Chaldean Genesis account, except for the fact that instead of saying God and Lord, it's literally saying Marduk and Enlil and Inanna and, you know, these different beings. There's many different beings. It was changed by, you know, again, the Masoretes into just looking like monotheism, but it wasn't ever monotheism. And so, you know, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, et cetera. Yeah, okay. Well, let's look at their works. When you go and go to Jericho, the Battle of Jericho, what does Yahweh say? Yahweh gives the order. They, 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 sh they take down Jericho with sonic weaponry, and, and then they kill every single man, woman, and child. But isn't that murder? You know, this, this is, again... It says no murder, no adultery, no sexual immorality, but yet we could find so many accounts, uh, more than dozens. I would say we're we're probably looking at more than dozens of accounts of murder blatantly being ordered by, again, this entity Yahweh. And it's interesting, too, because take the gold and the silver, put it into Yahweh's house, the storehouse, and then the women that haven't been with any men, well, keep them for yourselves. Right there, I mean, we've basically blown away all this. <laughs> the seven laws of Noah. So it, it obviously does not apply to the uh, Elites. 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 You know, again, it's all right there. It, it's all right in front of our, our face. And yet this is what we're watching. This is the stage that we're at right now. 
Ezekiel 38, that is all about creating greater Israel to be the center point of uh, the NWO. I know, and you know, I'm I'm still a little bit stuck on our service men and women who are put in positions to dress up, and and these are this is how you do a ritualistic sacrifice. You dress up the one to be sacrificed, and you put symbols and so on to the gods to them, and then you send them marching off. And these service men and women truly believe that they're doing the right thing, and they go and they do as they're told, and then they come back and they realize, oh my gosh, what have I done? And then they have to live with that. And you can see how I, I have to be careful with the words that I use because I don't want to flag. But you can see um, how they are uh, taking their own ability to remain on the 3D because they feel so horrible. And believe me, the, the controllers that sent them off, off to that place doesn't matter which side they're on. The controllers have one one thing to do. You know, it's it's a it's to send these people off it doesn't it just doesn't matter and i think that's what mike and i really try to hammer home with almost every single video is it's both sides acting differently but they are one you know they they both have it, it doesn't matter what they say they're both speaking out the wrong side of their heads <laughs> well you know the reality is they don't have any religion they don't even really believe in an afterlife. This, this is the, the reality. Religion is just a tool for them. They do kiss the butt of extraterrestrial and interdimensional beings in order to get their way. Um, but no, they, they, it, it's never been about an afterlife. And it's never been even about religion except for using religion as a tool. Meanwhile, you still have this happening. Here's here's a couple boats. These remind me of the boats, you know, breaching Normandy, dropping off 717 migrants into the UK yesterday. More than 25,000 people. When you see these boats like this too, they're almost every single one of them is male fighting age. This is because this is a military operation. And this is also part of what they've put into play with the karma uh, because now, you know, again, uh, they're going to change the system, and even though uh, the Roman Empire never really uh, dis disappeared, it just morphed. You know, the power went into the church in the Holy Roman Empire, and then, you know, again, you had the British Empire, the sun never set, the American Empire, extension of the British Empire, which is, again, extension of the Roman Empire, which, again, is literally going back to Samaria and the Anunnaki. And you have military-grade weapons found near the U.S.-Mexico border, near Ajo. So if Peter is listening, I, I hope you're not around Ajo at this point in time. That was a friend uh, when we were in the camper. It always seemed like we went to the place where they were last, or they went to the place where we were last. And yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you don't want to be right near the border, and you don't want to be in the middle of the big cities in this time. Um, as we really may be uh, literally uh, a week, two weeks, three weeks away from major events. Um, many people have said they don't think that we're going to even get to the election. That's a high possibility, you know, because again, if we were in a wartime state, they might officially call it off or postpone or delay it. I mean, we don't know what they're going to do in that sense. Um, ultimately, though, I do think you're going to end up after the chaos um, with a very, very pro-Israel, uh, which we, obviously, we, you know, we're sending more troops over there right now as we speak. Uh, even the, the Biden-Harris regime, you know, for all its look of not necessarily being pro-Israel, that's all a ruse. It's always pro-Israel because, again, the United States is simply a, a military policing force for the the real control system which has every intention of operating out of israel even if israel looks like it gets almost wiped back to the stone age in the ensuing war that come everything that they do is just to clear the way for the next step this is showing that we are seven times higher than at the peak of the 2008 financial crisis with unrealized losses on investment securities. Yeah, they, they do plan on absolutely 
wiping out our monetary system um, because again they want to create one global system we all know this and they obviously want it to be digital absolutely you know they want it under your skin quite literally and meanwhile um, this has over 200 more radio stations were bought by uh, Soros uh, 220 I saw one say the you know again the FCC fast-tracked this of course because every single agency is bought and paid for by those L ites and then the interesting choice of words um, from Putin here as he basically says uh, the Western L ites grew accustomed to filling their stomachs with what yeah I mean it was a very interesting choice of words but again, you know, if you think he's not what part of them, you know, think again. It's all coming out. You know, none of these beings are, are really all that intelligent. They have no spiritual intelligence because they would understand that they've, you know, sold their souls, so to speak, to the devil. And a lot of their... Um, their characteristics, their moral or lack of morals is, is really getting to be so obvious and so disconcerting. And you got to kind of feel for the people that made the choice of trying to protect these people or trying to support these people. You back the wrong horse. Now, whether this is left or right, doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's the, all the horses are owned from the same, uh, you know, owners. They're all coming out of the same stable, even if it appears they're not. Mm-hmm. You know, what I what I see is more and more encouraging every day is people really, truly are waking up. And I, I see it on uh, comments with different social medias. I see it in our comments. You guys are well, I mean, we're more uh, we're we're more solid. You know, the solidarity is coming together. People are waking up. We are making a difference. And I know sometimes you look on mainstream if you're still able to watch mainstream and it seems like we are going nowhere we're still backpedaling no we're not i i i see from what i see with my own eyes our souls are becoming more more complete and they're becoming more compatible as people wake up so uh, please be be encouraged by everything that you do every word that you say every comment that you make um every every mantra mantra every prayer that you put out there for humanity please understand that it's making a difference and the controllers are definitely the last thing they're going to do is openly show you they're not going to show you that you're making a difference because it's part of the psychological operation is to make people think that they're all alone but we are not we are not all alone we are getting through this a uh, little by little step by step we're making it we just have to keep going we know who the plants are we absolutely know who the plants are they um they don't hide themselves uh they they say nice words but it's really easy to see under the surface these days who they are yeah you know again russell brand uh, yeah be real I, I remember when i first saw him i thought he was hilarious um his humor was something different and kind of crazy but you know he's just one of them he's another actor there's no difference between him and Zelensky. he's given this role now all of a sudden you know he, he literally does have the pope habit on and uh he's pushing the catholic church why is that well because again the religious part of it is the biggest control narrative there is and in these times people are going to be shaken they're going to go back to whatever they know um, so uh, many people are going to go back to the church. They're going to be on their knees doing rosaries and, you know, uh, they're looking for help. The reality is all the help you need is inside you. You, you don't need dogma. Uh, dogma is, is again, perhaps the number one tool that they use. Uh, trending a moment ago was greater Israel. And then we have satanic here and cat three, by the way, uh, does look like they are aiming a hurricane over at Florida. We'll talk more about that upcoming uh, as it's very curious to see the manipulation going on. When you really think about it, the good billionaires are going to save us from the bad billionaires. They're all part of the system. And and I'm so happy uh, to at least know that our f <laughs> evolutionary family, you, you, get, you guys get it. And that's wonderful. The evolution of war. 
Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. And if, if we think that digital currency is going to be safe, we need to have our heads examined. This whole system, the internet, comes from the military, and it comes from again the draconian system. There's no safety in anything with digits. It, there's it, if you do anything against the system, they'll ostracize you. So you're going to have to be totally part of the system. You're going to have to go along with everything that they dictate. And, you know, perhaps, you know, some people will put up resistance till that point and then they'll say, no, you know, I like my lifestyle. I like my cushion. I'm not going to give up my mansion. And they'll go along with it at some point in time. You know, it, it's, it's going to be a choice that, you know, all of us, are going to have to make at some point in time. And we might have made one choice now, but will we, when, when, when things start getting tougher, will we stick to that choice is a big question. Progress? Look at those grand houses. This actually you know, reminds me a lot of um, my aunt's neighborhood, my uh, kind of like the family house. Uh, it was a big old spooky thing, kind of like this. Not quite as nice as this one, but similar. And now look what you got. This this is what they do. This is progress. This this really says what the system does. It takes beauty and destroys it. Mm-hmm. This is a shame. I mean, there's such artwork and intellect that goes into making these very beautiful grand buildings. <laughs> and I, I saw this. I, I, just, I love this tuning fork. Yes, I absolutely love it. And I think I need one now. By the way, Cindy does use tuning forks. She has hundreds of them. Each one is basically tuned to a different frequency. She has tuning forks for your liver, for your spleen, uh, for each of the chakras. And what she does is she puts her intention with the fork and repatterns people so that they can get in contact with their higher selves, so they can um entrain be entrained and have their energies entrained to a healthy higher frequency i could not do it without my husband he's the power behind the punch oh thank you sweetie uh, i like the way she puts puts that well i, I am a uh, amplifier if you are familiar with human design um which is a very interesting um thing in and of itself uh, just five minutes of listening to 528 hertz music significantly reduce stress. Other studies show that 528 hertz boosts testosterone production, lowers reactive oxygen species in the brain. Sound is an incredibly potent way to change your health. Absolutely, light and sound. It gives us our manifest uh, universe. So if we're tuning in to things like P. Diddy uh, and Lady Gaga and Pink, Man, we're on a highway to hell, and we would be better off, in my mind, listening to ACDC than those other ones, by the way. Agreed. Small doses, though. But again, you want to pull yourself higher in frequency. These articles are talking about the actual effects on the endocrine system, absolutely, and the atomic nervous system. Um, you know, I love the work of Johannes Lindstedt, who is a Spanish guitarist um, that mixes in sometimes occasionally uh, a little Santana type of vibe to it. And it's a very high vibe, and he doesn't have a lot of followers. I mean, he really, really doesn't. He's put out like 10 albums. And why doesn't he? Because I think his frequency is too high. That's really what Cindy gets, uh, is that, uh, again, the system... And you'll find this more now, I think. Um, more people are questioning this, too, saying, hey, I'm not pushing anything political. I'm just making music, or I'm just teaching yoga, or I'm just teaching qigong, or I'm just showing people how to eat healthy. Well, the system doesn't want any of that. No, not one bit. No, not at all. I mean, they're just going to do it every corner they possibly can they're gonna they're gonna try to trip that up you know sound is such an amazing tool um i know i i've said this in the past but when i was learning about biofield tuning there was there was so much information that was hidden away and 
and put back into classified because it was a, a matter of national security. If people understand what sound can do, if they understand that to a high degree, there can be some some big problems if everybody understood that it could be used. The, the for as bad they, they can use it for as much bad as it can be used for as much good. And if somebody like Mike and I knew and understand how much good it can can and we do we do understand how much good and we utilize it but if that were to be given to the masses now that would be a problem for them so they have um, hidden a lot of information when it comes to vibration and sound and healing uh, they don't want that out there they absolutely don't want that out there because we can heal ourselves and we can heal each other I mean, if we are committed to growing our energy bodies and cleaning our energy bodies and utilizing that as a tool and a channel for good, too many people doing that, it's going to cause them a problem. Absolutely. As they keep finding more and more Nazca petroglyphs um, and realizing, boy, there's an awful lot of communication going on there with people that were flying by in the sky i mean more and more of these geoglyphs uh again you know peru is loaded uh with leftover relics of um our connection to more advanced beings and at a time too when you again look at the ages it's it's only in the dark age and the end of the bronze age as you see this this mountain goat going by boy do i miss uh, the mountains of new mexico and hikes like this so nice um it was only in those times that the entities were really nasty and and horrible and and brought war and death and destruction before that when we're talking about encounters in the silver age and in the bronze age period closer to the silver age and of course the golden age then the beings that we encountered were benevolent they were very very nice they were very very considerate of humans they respected human sovereignty and they just kind of taught us uh, again the ways of the universe this is hidden uh, away in, in the indigenous traditions across the planet and this is why the indigenous traditions have been pretty much almost eradicated or you know again uh, hidden from from the mass of, of the population obviously the abrahamic traditions are the traditions of the conquerors look at this little guy look at him oh my god what an adorable face i mean that is cuteness overload it absolutely is and then you got this guy he's just happy to see you he's a cutie pants he's so cute when you smile when you laugh uh, when you are feeling the energy of love it's all expansive now at the same time when we see everything that the controllers give us the fear the indoctrination what does indoctrination do it, it gives us parameters to not go past it says you can't do this you can't do that stick on this road don't think outside of the box you know it, it just always you know it it makes me almost laugh when people try to prove the bible by quoting the bible do you know how stupid that is y you know when you're trying to prove something by using that tool in order to prove itself it doesn't make any logical sense but then again 78 iq for president that doesn't make any logical sense either no i mean if people simply understood that the the true lockdown is simply in the mind yes. that those things that uh, have bars in front of your world those are your thoughts those bars are your thoughts and guess where you got those thoughts and beliefs from absolutely and and i do love that the true lockdown is is all about the mind very much so and also they're trying to lock down our heart so we, we don't have the compassion for others by using things like patriotism as a tool to inflate our egos to get us thinking that you know 
we're somehow much better than somebody else. And they do this in so many ways, you know, by denying the existence of a soul in, in an animal, a bird, a fish, no, uh, trees even, flowers. No, souls are everywhere. Everything is consciousness. And it's just simply having a, uh, a temporary experience as something else. And that will change over time. Most beings, again, take the root of an elemental being a simple elemental which is given one task tend to that flower and then you grow from there and yet it is an individuated soul from source but yet it is a fractal of source that has all the potential to blossom literally into uh, a deva which you know i would equate to uh, a word that we would take as a benevolent god but again it's just a being that understands how the universe works more than the typical person indeed as always guys thanks for your support source bless and namaste namaste